Hello there, and welcome to a video that's all about the most incredible archaeological finds. In this video, we'll take you on a journey through time as we explore some of the most amazing and breathtaking discoveries ever made by archaeologists. From ancient civilizations to lost treasures, we'll showcase some of the most remarkable discoveries that have helped us uncover the mysteries of the past. So sit back, relax, and get ready to be amazed by these wonders. Let's start with an archaeological discovery in Turkey, where a team of researchers uncovered a series of ancient Greek pithos burials. Pithos burials were a common practice in ancient Greece, where the dead were buried in large ceramic jars known as pithoi. The team of archaeologists unearthed 13 pithos burials along with a number of other artifacts in the city of Parion. Parion was a Greek colony that existed from the 8th century BCE to the 4th century AD and was located on the coast of the Sea of Marmara. The pithoi that were found date back to the 6th century BCE and were likely used for the burial of infants and young children. The team believes that these burials were part of a larger cemetery that has yet to be fully excavated. In addition to the pithoi, the team found a number of other artifacts, including bronze and iron weapons, pottery and jewelry. These finds provide valuable insight into the lives and culture of the ancient Greeks who lived in Parion. The discovery of these pithos burials shed new light on the burial practices of ancient Greece and provides important clues about the lives of the people who lived in Parion thousands of years ago. Archaeologists made an exciting discovery in Kazakhstan in 2016, an ancient pyramid that's estimated to be around 3,000 years old. The pyramid is located in the Sariark region, which was an important area for the nomadic tribes of the time. The pyramid is thought to have been built by the Saka people, who were a nomadic tribe that lived in the area from around 1000 BCE to 200 BCE. The Saka were known for their skills in horsemanship and metalworking and were believed to have had a complex social structure. The discovery of the pyramid is significant because it suggests that the Saka had more advanced building skills than previously thought, and also because the structure may be older than similar structures in Egypt. It's made up of stone slabs and has a height of around 18 feet. It's thought to have been a burial site for a member of the Saka elite, in addition to the pyramid, the archaeologists also found a number of other artifacts in the area, including pottery, tools, and animal bones. These finds will help the team to better understand the lives and culture of the Saka people. Kerma is an ancient city located in what's now modern-day Sudan. It was the capital of the Kingdom of Kerma, which existed from around 2500 BCE to 1500 BCE. The Kingdom of Kermit was a powerful and prosperous kingdom that traded with Egypt and other neighboring civilizations. The city of Kermit was a major center for the production of ceramics, textiles, and other goods. It was also home to a number of impressive architectural structures, including large stone buildings and fortified walls. The Kingdom of Kermit was eventually conquered by the Egyptians in the 16th century BCE, and the city of Kermit was largely abandoned. However, the ruins of the city have been well-preserved and have provided valuable insights into the culture and society of the ancient kingdom of Kerma. Archaeological excavations of Kerma have uncovered a number of important artifacts, including pottery, jewelry, and tools. The most famous of these artifacts is the Kerma Steel, which is a large stone monument that features inscriptions in an unknown language. The Kingdom of Kerma and the City of Kerma are important parts of African history, and the archaeological discoveries made at the site continue to provide valuable insights into the lives and culture of the ancient Nubian people who lived there. The City of Tello is one of the most ancient in the world. It can be found in what's now Iraq, and it was there in February 2023 that archaeologists found a 4,500-year-old palace and temple that almost certainly belonged to a civilization that we know barely anything about, the Sumerians. As some of you will already know, the Sumerians are generally credited with the invention of writing 4,000 years ago, back when this temple and the associated palace were built. Tello was called Gursu. The ruins of the ancient city were first found 140 years ago, after which the site has been excavated relentlessly. But somehow, these enormous discoveries were missed until now. 
Based on inscriptions on the walls, the temple appears to have been called Ininu and was dedicated to the Sumerian deity Ningirshu. The palace, when its name is translated into English, is the Lord Palace of the Kings. Within the palace, archaeologists found 200 cuneiform tablets detailing the administrative history of the city of Girsu. It'll take time to work through these priceless finds, but our understanding of the Sumerians may be greatly enhanced by the time the experts are done. The Throne Hall of Dongola, sometimes referred to as the Mosque Building, is an ancient structure located in modern-day Sudan. It was built in the 6th century AD by the Kingdom of Makuria, which was a Christian Nubian kingdom that existed from around the 4th to the 14th century. The Throne Hall was an important building for the Kingdom of Makuria, as it was the seat of the king and the site of important ceremonies and events. The building's made of mud brick and features a number of impressive architectural features, including domed ceilings and arched doorways. It was abandoned in the 14th century after repeated invasions by the Mamluks and was eventually buried by sand and other debris. Even after this abandonment and partial burial, though, it still remained in use as a mosque. The throne hall was rediscovered by archaeologists in the 1960s and has since had sections of its original structure restored. Excavations of the site have uncovered a number of important artifacts, including pottery, metalwork, and Christian artwork. These finds provide valuable insights into the culture and society of the Kingdom of Makuria. The Kingdom of Aksum once occupied the land that's now known as Ethiopia, but traces of its pre-Islamic past still exist there. One of those traces is the Azana Stone. This monument is over 1,650 years old and is a unique historical document. It records in full the conversion of King Azana to Christianity, after which Christianity became the default religion of the kingdom. Following on from there, the inscriptions on the stone tell the story of Aksuma's subsequent wars and conquests, including the capture of the neighboring kingdom of Moreau. Barely any records from this era still exist in this part of Africa, so the cultural value of the Azana Stone can't be overstated. It appears that the king scribe began to record his deeds on the stone before Azana's conversion because, in the earliest of the inscriptions, he refers to himself as the son of the great god Marem, a pagan deity. Wanting to ensure that his deeds could be understood and appreciated by everyone, Azana had the stone inscribed in ancient Greek an ancient Arabian language called Sabaean, and an ancient Eritrean language called Giz. To some scholars, that makes the Azana Stone comparable to the far more famous Rosetta Stone. Archaeologists excavating the ancient city of Tel Rehov in the Jordan Valley have made an exciting discovery. The oldest known beehives in Israel, and perhaps the whole world. The beehives are estimated to be around 3,000 years old and are made of unbaked clay and straw. They were arranged in rows and would have been capable of housing thousands of bees. This discovery provides valuable insights into the history of beekeeping and the use of honey in ancient Israel. Bees were highly valued in the ancient world for their honey, which was used for cooking, medicine, and religious rituals. The discovery of these ancient beehives sheds light on the culture and society of Tel Rehov, which was an important center of trade and commerce in the ancient world. In addition to honey, Tel Rehov was known for its production of other commodities such as wine and oil. The city was strategically located at the junction of several major trade routes, which allowed it to prosper and become a major player in the ancient world. These ancient beehives provide valuable insights into the history and culture of the ancient Near East and underscore the importance of bees and honey in human societies throughout history. Archaeologists in China have uncovered a tomb thought to have been the final resting place of a couple who were buried together over a thousand years ago. The tomb, located in the Yang Jiwan archaeological site in Hunan province, was found to contain brick coffins and ceramic tile pillows and is believed to date back to the Northern Song Dynasty. What makes this discovery unusual is that the couple were buried side by side and linked by a small window known as a ferry bridge, an unusual feature at the time. The bridge was designed to enable the couple to continue their marriage in the afterlife. 
Lead archaeologist Yang Ningbo explained that it was common for couples to be buried together during this period. Only a few burial objects were found at the site, leading researchers to believe that the tomb may have been the final resting place of ordinary people. However, charcoal fragments discovered nearby suggest that a traditional burial ceremony may have taken place. Analysis of these fragments using carbon dating techniques may allow researchers to determine when the couple was laid to rest. Despite the significance of the discovery, archaeology is considered a taboo topic in China by some who view it as a desecration of the dead. During the construction of power lines in Russia, archaeologists unearthed two pure gold bongs that were used by Aryan tribal chiefs in ceremonies to smoke cannabis, which were buried in a stone chamber alongside other gold items dating back 2,400 years ago. These historic drug paraphernalia, which experts believe belong to the Scythians, a nomadic warrior race that ruled parts of Europe and Asia from the 9th century BCE to the 4th century AD, were found to contain thick black residue tested positive for cannabis and opium. The Scythians reportedly used the strong mixture of cannabis and opium to alter their state of mind before heading into battle, a practice also mentioned by Greek historian Herodotus. Along with the bongs, archaeologists also discovered other items such as golden cups, rings, and neck rings, which have been cleaned and are now displayed in a Russian museum. The discovery of these items not only reveals the culture and rituals of the enigmatic Scythians, but also provides insight into their use of opium and cannabis in ancient times. They may have led a sophisticated, opulent lifestyle, which challenges the conventional view of nomadic cultures. Peat bogs can preserve almost anything. You've probably seen pictures and heard stories about bog bodies, which are the remains of humans who fell or were thrown into bogs thousands of years ago. But the preservative nature of the bogs can take care of items much smaller and more delicate. As an example, here's a ball of butter that survived in a bog in Ireland for more than 2,000 years. Jack Conway of Emla County Meath found the butter while cutting turf in a bog close to his home in 2016. The 22-pound lump of butter is egg-shaped and apparently smells like strong cheese. Based on the fact that it was found more than 12 feet deep in the bog, experts believe it was put there deliberately. It might have been a ritual offering in the hope that ancient gods would protect either the land or the animals and the people on it. 2,000 years ago, owning butter was a sign of wealth. It was a luxury item and was as likely to be used to pay rent or taxes as it was to be eaten. Amazingly, it was still moist when it was recovered. It's dried up since it's been removed from the bog, but it's gone on display at the National Museum in Dublin. Life for infants was a lot harder in the ancient world than it is now. Only a third of babies born during the Bronze Age lived through their first year. And even then, two-thirds of them would pass away before becoming adults. That doesn't mean that parents were neglectful or uncaring, though. In fact, if experts are right about the purpose of these ornate drinking vessels, they weren't totally dissimilar to the parents of today. These cute cups have been found all over Germany, and analysis of their contents has proven that they once contained the milk of a variety of domesticated animals. The oldest of the cups found to date is 3,200 years old. It's believed that the animal designs were intended to make the cups more attractive to children and therefore encourage them to drink their milk. They might even have doubled up as toys. The people of the time would have had no way to pasteurize their milk, so drinking it was dangerous. But they couldn't have known that. Similar designs can be seen in the baby bottles of the 21st century. Europe plays host to a surprisingly high number of underground streets, tunnels, and cities, but none of them are as likely to take your breath away as Kayamakli in Turkey. This secret world has existed below Turkey's streets for far longer than most European nations have existed. It's thought that the first people to live here set up their homes about 4,000 years ago. At that time, living in the darkness between the stone and mud walls was preferable to living in the light and being stalked from location to location by the tribes of barbarians that roamed this part of the world. For such a prehistoric settlement, Kayamakli is surprisingly well organized. It's eight stories deep, and we're only allowed to see five of those stories. 
For reasons unknown, archaeologists and the Turkish national government have never allowed civilians access to the bottom three levels. We wonder what they might have found down there that they don't want the rest of the world to know about. Even what we do know is impressive. There are even winemaking rooms and a stone theater. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you'll be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching.